All right, enough breakout players. We'll get the last section here. My 2025 big board drops on Yahoo this Thursday morning, so make sure you check it out. I sent Charles a little sneak peek because I haven't fully solidified like who's going where. It's either gonna be top 30 or top 40 as well. I haven't figured out how deep I'm getting into that, uh, but I do have my kind of short list and my overall takeaways. I'll I'll list off my top 10. How about that? that that's gonna be my one little spoiler on here, which is kind of not as fun, but my top 10 is as follows. I have Michael Williams, the edge from Georgia at number one. I have a dual Abdul Carter, edge from Penn State at number two. And I, I feel pretty good about that one. Uh three, I have Will Johnson, corner from Michigan. Four, I have Will Campbell, tackle from LSU. Five, I have Mason Graham, defensive tackle from Michigan. Six, I have Emory Jones, tackle from LSU. We're going to talk about that. Seven, I have Malachi Starks, safety from Georgia. Eight, I have Travis Hunter Jr. Uh, corner from Colorado, and I strictly see him as a corner. I'll talk about that in a sec. Nine, I have Calvin Banks Jr. Uh, tackle. Actually, I see him more as a guard from Texas. And then 10, I'm still up in the air on who I have at 10, but just a couple names I'm looking at. Benjamin Morrison, a corner from Notre Dame. James Pierce, an edge from Tennessee. Nick Scourden, uh changed his name, but he's an edge from Texas A&M. He was at Purdue. Kenneth Grant, D-tackle from Michigan. Deion Walker, D. Lyman from Kentucky. I'm not saying tackle because he, he plays at freaking D end. Anyone that's saying that he's a big nose tackle is, hasn't watched him. Uh, and then that's, yeah, that's kind of, that's, that's the rest of my list that I'm looking at for the top 10. But thoughts, takeaways on the list I sent you. And really, I have some more thoughts to go from that, but I have talked enough. What a blessed life Jaden Daniels lived last year, right? <laughs> right. Two right. first round receivers, a top 10 pick at receiver. You got two top 10 prospects to offensive tackle. That LSU offense was loaded last year. But yeah, I, I, I went back and I watched some clips last night when you, you sent this to me. And I think, dude, both of those guys, like their talent absolutely merits being here uh, in the top 10 at offensive tackle. Like Will Campbell, to me, there are some guys where you start running through the draft prospect draft draft process. And like, there are some guys where it's like, Oh, five plays. I'm good. I get it. Yeah. I get it. And I think, I, I think, yeah. I think he's one of those guys. Like I feel it's the clean. same way the, about Michael Williams and especially about like Will Johnson, the corner from Michigan. Oh, yes. I only need to see like five, 10 plays and I get it. And I'm good. He's such an easy eval. Yeah. Yeah. He, he Will Johnson has a lot of Patrick Sertan to him. The, oh, the he's a monster. PS2 to him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's, I have him at three, and really, it's like, if you put him at one for this class, I actually wouldn't even bat an eye, because he's as clean as a corner prospect and get size, ball skills, understanding, hands, um, turning, like, loose hips, mm -hmm. using the size, and uh, and just actually, like, like smothering guys. Uh, yeah, I'm, he's sick. <laughs> I, yeah, ever, I really like him. Ever since we've had the, uh, was the COVID season where, like, Micah Parsons, Jamar Chase, Panay Sewell, they all skipped out. And they came in and it didn't matter really. Yeah. My dad, like whenever we're, you know, we're home for the holidays or whatever, we're watching like the playoff games. He's, he started saying a bunch, like he'll ask me, Oh, what, what year is that guy? Cause it started with Brock Bowers, right? Cause yep. the Brock Bowers came versus Michigan. He asked me, he's like, what year is that guy? So he's a freshman. He's like, Oh, if that was you, you would this would be your last college football game. Like you're going on ice for two years right. until it's out of the NFL. And now there's like a bunch of guys like where that thought process comes back into my head, basically. Like when you're watching sophomores, which one of these guys doesn't need to play any more college football? Will Johnson He's will it. probably be number one on my list for that one. Yep. And Will Campbell will probably be two. Right. No, right. no uh, of the these class, even though they're three and four for me. Campbell, it, it's I'm trying to, uh, he, he's kind of funky because he, he has a weird stance, Like he stands upright. He has his hands like there, which is, I know some modern teaching to that, but it's, he plays better than he looks like he's a better athlete than he looks, mm -hmm. uh, just as far as his stance, because his stance looks unathletic to me. Uh, but yeah, no, he's, he's clean. Uh, that's the best way I can describe him. Is he an overwhelming? Yeah. This guy is a freak tackle one, maybe not. But it's like he's very, very good at the very least. And maybe I'm underselling and I want to see maybe another year of it. But it's like, I see what this guy is. This is a starting tackle. Emory Jones, the other tackle who plays right side for him, probably has more upside than Campbell, which is pretty nuts. But it, it's that's he's a little bit more freaky, has the longer arms, it looks like to me, um, has some kind of more trait stuff to him. But it's like, 
his is a little more projection, but it's easy projection. It's like these are this is what a top ten tackle looks like, uh, even if it's not all one hundred percent clean. I wanted to talk to you about Malachi Starks, the Ooh. safety from Georgia. Whew. He might even be higher for I mean, that dude. <laughs> talk about football players. Football player. Right. What's football your thoughts player. on Malachi Starks? Yeah, give me give me the Georgia fan synopsis of Malachi Starks. Um. I I was really hoping that Caleb Downs was going to come to Georgia so that oh, I could because so, they were they were on the one yard line but so that I could claim that Georgia had the best safety duo in the history of college football and I think that I would have had some merit to that if they could have got Caleb Downs because Malachi Starks the other half of you know the would be duo is really that good and and it really started because I, I I think he I want to say he was recruited as a cornerback coming into Georgia. And the first game that they play against Oregon, his first game in college, he pulled off one of the craziest interceptions that I've seen over the past few years. And I was like, oh, my God, who the hell is this guy? Then you go back to see, oh, five-star, top-five prospect in the country, blah, 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 blah. And he plays just like it. Like, he looks like it, – it's one of those no-brainer things where he can play in the box, he can play deep, he can play, like, linebacker occasionally, he can play outside corner occasionally, but – He's just he's like the linchpin in what Georgia wants to do defensively because he does everything at such a high level. Like again, he's one of those guys. I don't think you need to play, son, but I appreciate your service, yeah. go dogs. <laughs> he he, you said linchpin. I was gonna say he's a keystone player. Like yeah. he 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 makes everything else work for them. He mm -hmm. and it's not one where it's like oh he's so smart and that's why it's like no he's a freak and he's big <laughs> and he's like yeah you can he play in like he's a back truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a modern defender. Like he's a yeah. modern back end defender that can do a little bit of everything. So I, I love him. He was such a fun watch. So anyone that doesn't know who Caleb Downs is, he was the safety of Bama. He is Josh Down or yeah, Josh, Josh Downs', Downs is, brother. Josh Downs is the slot player, slot receiver for the Colts who played in North Carolina. So Caleb Downs was a safety for Bama. Anyone who saw him in the uh postseason against Michigan, he looks like the best player on the field as a true freshman playing safety. Uh, ends up had a bidding war, ends up transferring to Ohio State. And that's why I think Ohio State should be the easiest favorite, not just because of downs, but because their defense has, I don't know, four or five guys that could be first round consideration. And their offense has four or five guys that could be first round consideration. Uh, and they're, they have depth, they have vets, they have young guys. Yeah. But yeah, Ohio State's my, my college football prediction for champion, which as a Wisconsin guy pains me, but it's just being yeah. real about it. This uh, is but yeah. I was about to say a, a guy that will be, I'm, I'm sure, very high on the, the big he's board. Number one the, for me already on 2026. Like it's not a big list right now, but he's number one. That's safety. Yeah. The Caleb but Downs. Yeah, dude. Even just moving away from Ohio State's defense, like you go to the offense, and I, I'm you know playing a ton of college football 25 and Quinshawn Judkins. Like there have been yep. debates, literally on like Reddit forums about if is this player too overpowered. And that player is joining the backfield with Trayvon Henderson, who could have been a top 100 pick last year. Who's like back. a day two running back, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and <laughs> they're going with an offense coordinator, Chip Kelly, who loves having two running backs and and, and a quarterback that can run a little bit, even if he's Dude, not the greatest. And, and Chip cleared his schedule for this, right? He said, yep. nope, I'm done with the head coaching duties. Done. I just want to call plays. <laughs> Give me a bunch of 99 <laughs> overall guys again, a bunch of fast guys, and let's, let's dial some stuff up again. <laughs> and then I, I'm just going to call plays and go home, man. That's all I want to do. That's it. I Yes. <laughs> Dude, I saw him at the Kentucky Derby, and he looked giddy. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Judkins, I he's the only running back I have a blue grade on right now, um, which to me means an easy top twenty guy, a lottery pick grade. And he, God, he is just so zero. I don't know what his long end speed is, like what his fifth and sixth gear is, but his acceleration from zero to four and zero to five is exceptional. Like his patience to get through holes and burst through holes and I call it tempoing runs. Like he's so good at that, the feel. And then he can just get real quick. Like he's going to be a doubles hitter, like, mm -hmm. but just awesome at it. I, he's so good. The running back class is really good. I will say that. Um, I also love the guy from Boise State, um, Ashton Genty. 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 Genty from Boise State. He's really, really good. Ollie Gordon from Oklahoma State. I'm a little lower than other, but I still see him as a second rounder. And then there's like Devin Neal from Kansas, Amarian Hampton from North Carolina. There's some, oh, Jaden Ott from Cal. There's some really, really good backs. Uh, but who, what else I wanted to say? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Before we wrap this up, uh, other overall takeaways just for everybody else, other positions. They 
awesome edge class, awesome defensive line class. Michael Williams and yeah, oh yeah, Michael Williams and Abdul Carter are both freaky freaks. Uh, Abdul Carter was more of a, he's gone through the Michael Parsons thing. He wears number 11. They had him an off ball linebacker and rushed the passer a little bit. He was still productive when he did it. They're making him mostly just an edge player this year. This dude is a freak, can bend, can spin, can one arm, single arm guys, all uh, offense tackles all the way back in the backfield. He's a monster on the inside when they have him rush on the inside. Uh, so this was a little bit of projection for me, but uh, same with Michael Williams because Georgia just has five stars everywhere, so they rotate these guys. But when he's on the field, he looks like a dude. And it's different than Trevon Walker from a few years ago with Trayvon because Trayvon is just a freak but doesn't know how to use it. Michael Williams knows how to use it. Like he is productive on those snaps. He knows how to, he can line up inside. They're going to have him more outside this year, which is great for his projection. But this dude can line up inside and like take it to guards. He can two gap, one gap. He's got freaky traits. I'm, I'm super high on him. So I had seven edge players in my top 30 short list, at least seven. And I had 10 defense alignment and edge players in my top 30. So a third of these guys are defense alignment or edges that, which is, and I'm, I'm not even stretching there. There might be even more that others are considering in there. Um, good corner tackle class, QB receiver class. Eh. I had no Shadur in my top 30. Uh, Shadur Sanders from Colorado. Travis Hunter for me, I see as a corner. Twitchy. Just gets it. Just moves different. Receiver, I don't think he kind of gets receiver as well. Like he had a lot of botches. Uh, and that led to some sacks actually for Shadur Sanders. So that's why I see him as a corner. So thank you for letting me get my big board in.